Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to talk about something that I think is a good news story in horticulture. It's that larger growers are starting to go away from using heavy pesticides in their operations and have started using beneficial insects. In fact, they're leaving their greenhouses wide open and letting those beneficial insects in and they're introducing some of their own. This is something that Rob Wine talked to me about when I visited Clearview Horticulture earlier this year. Let's have a review of what he said back then. So one of the cool things that we do around here is um, we don't use a lot of uh, chemicals, not a lot of pesticides. Um, we use what we call biological controls, so it's basically the good bugs fighting the bad bugs. So we, what we do is we introduce insects that are predators that will eat like aphids and thrip and, and uh, even if you're spraying harsh pesticides you'll always have low levels of bugs it's just the way it is because the yeah. bugs come in from outside um, but with uh, predators you can tolerate low levels because you know the good bugs will take care of them so we've gone to a philosophy of um, probably 20 years ago what we used to do is we just kind of close everything up and try and keep the bugs out now we actually leave everything open and let the bugs in on that very same tour, he ran into Robbie Wine just in passing. He's on the growing team, and he was instrumental in implementing some of these changes towards integrated pest management. That's what they call it when you stop spraying the heavy pesticides. So I had a chance later on in the year when I visited their retail greenhouse to steal a few minutes with Robbie Wine to talk about what it was like to implement those techniques in large greenhouses, and let's have a look at that interview. Hey, I'm here with uh, Robbie Wine. Who, uh, you know his dad from my other videos, but uh, you know I thought it would be interesting to talk to him because you've been involved with the establishment of biological controls in Clearview's operations, which I think is a great accomplishment, first of all, so thank you for doing that. Yeah, well, it's, it's been a lot of fun and uh, I've enjoyed doing it and uh, I've learned a lot along the way. Most of it's just trial and error. Yeah. Um, for every grower, it's very different. Uh, for a grower, say in a greenhouse, is very different than than a homeowner. Um, it it really depends on the type of plants you grow, the environment you grow them, um, and you really have to get to know uh, all the dynamics to come up with a program that works for you. Uh, and the same plants in the same type of greenhouse might not work. Uh, the program might not work down the street because they have a a, a different neighborhood of pests and beneficials coming in naturally. So it's really a lot of trial and error and to make it work. Uh, watching what's happening, eh? Yeah, watch, watching what's happening, yeah. Yeah, um, for, for homeowners, uh, it's almost a little bit easier to do pest control because you have the natural balance of, um, of uh, natural enemies or biocontrols out there doing the work and uh, a lot of people think uh, bugs are bad in general. They're icky and they're scary and they don't look good and, uh, and they eat your, eat your plants. Uh, but the reality is most bugs, the vast majority, are good for your plants. Um, and it's when you take things out of the balance that you start getting problems. Uh, the homeowner does have a lot of options for biocontrols. Now there's uh, a whole number of different things that, that they can get and use in their garden. Um, some are more practical than others. Of course, if you're outside and you release some ladybugs, you know, they might just fly a mile away. And, and so that's a good point, because that's what I've heard about ladybugs is uh, from a, a number of sources is yeah. people go out and they they spend a lot of money throwing ladybugs into their uh, into their garden. But after a certain amount of feeding, they have like a biological requirement to fly away to someone else's garden, which yeah. just seems like a waste of money to me. Yeah, it might be good for your neighbor. Uh, you know, there is tricks to, to ladybugs, uh, for instance. Uh, some people spray them with something sticky. I don't know if you heard of that, but you can no. spray them with like uh, Coca-Cola. So, so their wings are too sticky to fly away. <laughs> and uh, it's actually the ladybug larvae that's really proficient at uh, controlling things like uh, aphids right and so what you want to do is uh, make sure that the ladybugs stay on your plants long enough that the larvae uh, develop and, and those are the ones that are really voracious. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a picture of the ladybug larvae okay. because I get uh, these 
messages sometimes yeah. where they say, what is this thing? Yeah. And I'm like, that's the good one. You know, that's the yeah. one you want to have in your garden. They recognize the adults, but the larvae, it looks mm -hmm. like, almost looks like a little spider in a way. It's kind of yeah. like fuzzy. Uh, yeah, it's, some people describe them as alligators. Right. Because they're kind of elongated and they have that tail. Um, but in, in greenhouses, people actually don't use ladybugs anymore. Now there's, there's better predators and, and now it's become so specific. Uh, for instance, if, the, if you have an aphid, um, then depending on the size of the aphid, you'll use a different predator. Right. So uh, there's many genre of, of um, control agents for aphids, but say aphidius, for example, is a common one. People use Aphidius Irvi for a large aphid, or Aphidius colomani for a small aphid. Right. Um, or uh, or there's Matricariae, which can kind of go in between, and and uh, so it, it's a very dynamic thing. And there's so right. many tools at your disposal. So the more information you know, the better job you can do at controlling the insects, and and more cost effective. Great. Well, you know, now for a guy like you, who's who's who knows all this already and has access to all of these, um, specializing like that might be really attractive. But for the homeowner, I can imagine them sort of knocking their head and saying, "Boy, that sounds really complicated." Are yeah. there any generalists that you would Absolutely. recommend as, so, a, as a good solution? Yeah, and the best ones are often already uh, there in, in nature. Um, but like Aureus, also known as the as the uh, pirate bug or right. the flower bug. Uh, that's one that, that works really well, um, and it's a generalist. Um, uh, lace wings, uh, I mean, you want to try and find some things that aren't going to blow away. Um, what, one good thing for homeowners that's safe, uh, it's not a biocontrol, but it's not a nasty chemical, which is uh, just soap, which right. I'm sure you've, a lot of people have heard of. And, and the advantage to that is you can kill anything uh, but you won't create a residue on the plants, right. and, and that will allow the bios to come back and flourish later. Right, so it's very targeted. If you have it's, a bunch of aphids at the tip of your rows, yeah. you would just put the soap directly on them. Yeah. It has an effect on those, but it isn't sticking around for days and days and killing yeah. whatever else comes to the plant. Yeah, it will kill the beneficials there, but then you, know, you can suppress that population and try and get the nature balance back. Right. You know, maybe the beneficials just hadn't found it yet. So yeah. every once in a while, uh, you know, you might want to use some soap to get the numbers down. Um, but for, for biocontrols, for homeowners, uh, I mean, you're going to want to use something that doesn't fly away. Yep. <laughs> and, and like mites are a good option for that. Um, it really depends on your pest. Uh, and then there's nematodes, which are microscopic worms. Right. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different species of like, like nematodes. Like styrenema and that kind of thing. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's a good tool. I mean, you can, you can find a lot of information online or there's really good consultants uh, to figure out uh, uh, the best approach for the, the plant that you have. Yeah. So what, have you, what would you use on a clematis? What are your common pests? Yeah, then... so on a clematis, there, so like, I could talk at one pest at a time. And, and so, <laughs> so thrips is one thing that, that cl clematis can get. And what you want to use is uh, all the right tools at the right time. Uh, if it doesn't have a problem, um, then you don't want to use many biocontrols at all. Uh, if it's a very uh, strong variety that doesn't have problems, then don't do anything about it. Otherwise, right. you're just wasting your money. But a really cheap, effective thing to do for clematis is actually to use that flower bug or aureus. And you just put one aureus in the flower and, uh, in the, and, it, and it will eat the pollen. It will lay eggs there because they know it's a great site for the, uh, for the nymphs. And, and then they will um, uh, populate, reproduce right here on the plant. Uh, and so you'll have it for the long term. But then you want to use other predators to get the smaller thrips, like uh, um, cucumeris, for right. example. Those are little mites that will go all over the place and actually pull the thrips eggs right out of the plant tissue. And then you might want to also add some hypoaspis, which is a mite that will go into the soil and get the larvae that are, um, uh, uh, or the pupa, they're pupating in the soil 
that the aureus or the cucumeris can't get. Right. So if you have a serious thrips problem, you're, you're probably looking at uh, trying to balance out a few different populations of predators. But if nature's taking care of it, you just you wait until the damage start until you see high well, populations or you see damage. Yeah. Well, it's all about predicting what is going to have where the problems are going to be and when. Right. Uh, and so I know, uh, you know, I, I always do a little bit of preventatives on the plants to make sure we don't see the problems in the first place. Because uh, it's way cheaper than if you have a problem, um, unlike say chemicals where there's just one rate that you use with, with biological controls, if you have more pests, then you need more biocontrols. And, and so you could use like one hundredth the rate uh, of biocontrols a little bit earlier and have the same effect. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's really learning um, about the host, what problems it has, um, the environment that you're in, um, and, and the biocontrols you have at your disposal. The, the, the biocontrol guys, in my experience, are, are great people. They're very passionate about what they do, and they're trying to create solutions because they honestly don't have all the answers. They just can't have all the answers because they can't know as much about the crop as the grower knows about the crop. Uh, and, and everywhere they go is different. And uh, so it's all about finding a program that works for you. You see your repeating problems uh, and you just tinker with them and over time it gets better and better and better. And, uh, and eventually, uh, like in, in our case, it's, it's it's now much cheaper to use biocontrols. It's way more um, easier. I can just walk in here and throw some bugs on this and I don't have to make sure that, you know, the place is evacuated. Uh, and um, yeah, it, it, you know, and you feel, feel a little better about it too, feel, right? Feel, feel a little cleaner. You can sleep yeah. a little better at night. It's, it's less dangerous too, right? right? You can have less uh, potential workplace incidents and there, there is a, a lot of benefits to it. And, and you're working with nature, not against nature. Right. So if you have the situation working, it's just working itself out over time, uh, you know, compared to getting on what some people say, uh, call the, the pesticide treadmill, uh, your pesticides become less and less effective as you get resistance to those pesticides. All right, that's all I have on the topic, and I hope this was interesting to the general gardener. I think it's really interesting to me in horticulture because it shows a way forward where we don't have to go so hard against nature, and we can use nature to solve some of our problems in growing. If you have any questions about this, please drop those in the comments below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.